him in London and has prepared a presentation, a video presentation for us on uh, scratch brads, who many of you may know, but if you don't, I'm sure this would be quite a good introduction to them. And I will find. Hello, everybody. I'm okay. I will just queue up the video. Can I just check that you can see that okay? I can. Hello everybody, I'm Paul Kittle, a developer on scratch pads at Natural History Museum in London. And I'm going to talk today about our process of looking for a new data storage platform for scratch pads. So as a recap, scratch pads is a taxonomy and biodiversity VRE that's been around for over a decade. Uh, the current version is based on the PHP framework Drupal 7, which stops receiving security updates in November 2022. We've also we've already started discussing the future of scratch pads at last year's Biodiversity Next conference, and one of the outputs of that was the desire for projects in this space to share resources and work together a little uh, better. Um, given the key features of Scratch Pads are its uh, user interface, it makes sense for us to focus our development on that and uh, look for an existing platform we can integrate with to handle our data storage needs. So here's a summary of the requirements for such a backend platform. Uh, firstly, it must be able to store our data. Um, there are five core data types used by most Scratch Pads that a new platform has to be able to support, and I'll talk a bit more about those later. Um, some sites have needed to customize their data models by adding extra fields, so we need to be able to support this flexibility as well. And also the platform must be able to store and differentiate data belonging to different sites. Uh, we have over a thousand scratch pads hosted at the museum and we don't want to run an individual process for each site to store the, the data. Um, secondly, the uh, ability to programmatically read and write data. So whether that's through an HTTP API or a command line process or similar. Um, if the only way to access the data is through a UI, then obviously that's no good to us. Um, make sure that the software is maintained and actually uh, development activity is uh, ongoing. Um, bug fixes are fixed and security patches are released. Um, and also is this work likely to last in the long term. So we might be looking at roadmaps or development funding or anything like that that can give us an indication of that. Uh, those criteria are fairly critical. We expect a platform to support all of those. Uh, we also have some less critical but still important um, criteria, such as whether the software is mature and tested in the field. And we can use a scale called uh, technology readiness level, which again, I'll talk about later. Um, standardization, uh, if it uh, uses standardized APIs and data models, then that can lead to more portable data, um, making scratch pads more compatible with a wider range of software and generally make uh, development easier. Um, we're also interested in whether there is mutual benefit to our collaboration. So if a given platform has got a clear benefit from our participation, they'll hopefully be more able to support our development and make our lives a little bit easier. So uh, we decided we wanted to get some kind of quantitative measure for uh, each platform. So um, the six criteria I've just listed, we've devised a scoring uh, system which ranges from one to three where uh, one indicates a platform doesn't match that criteria um, at all. Uh, three indicates that it fully meets the criteria. And two um, is uh, an in-between state where there may be extra conditions uh, required to be fulfilled in order for that criteria to be met. Uh, we also can measure platform maturity using um, something based on the uh, EU scale of uh, technology readiness, which ranges from one to six, oh, sorry, from one to nine. Um, we can break that down into three broad categories where levels one to six uh, represent uh, an incomplete uh, technology, seven to eight demonstrate, uh, represent a product which has been demonstrated in, for example, staging or demo environments, and um, 
a level 9 indicates that it has been used successfully in production. So what platforms did we have a look at? Uh, we chose three platforms from the uh, a, from the VRE space as we thought that they would uh, offer us compatible data models and a greater potential for collaboration. And we also selected three platforms uh, relating to um, RDF data or linked data storage, um, as we thought those would give us uh, a, a, a high flexibility on uh, data storage requirements. So um, I'll just run through those quickly. First of all, Taxon Works, um, the taxonomic workbench uh, software. We have the DINA collection management system, which is a software output from the DINA consortium and uh, Living Atlas from the Atlas of Living Australia project. And then the three uh, slightly broader scope platforms, uh, Node Solid Server, which is the reference implementation of uh, Sir, Sir Tim Berners-Lee and W3C's uh, decentralized web storage system, Solid. Uh, Wikibase, which is the software that powers Wikidata. And uh, Quit Store, which is an RDF triple store with built-in version control based on Git. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the five data types I mentioned earlier. Um, the we we tried to map those across to each of the three uh, VRE platforms uh, with various varying levels of success. Um, the species profile is um, we did not manage to figure out a way to map that to Dina, and with the literature. Um, data type. We also didn't manage to find a way to map those over to Dina or to Living Atlas. Um, Taxonworks, uh, we managed to map uh, each of our data models to uh, one or more of those um, data types in Taxonworks, so that was quite successful for us. So taking a look at the uh, high priority criteria, there are uh, a few places where neither Dina Collections Manager nor Living Atlases fit the Scratchpad's use case exactly. Um, Dina Collections Manager didn't have the desired data model fit that we were looking for and uh, hasn't seen any development activity since June 2019 either. Um, whereas Living Atlas doesn't support write operations to some of its services, so um, particularly the indexing services, uh, which are uh, indexes for Darwin Core archive files, uh, which makes sense given its focus on data aggregation, but uh, it is uh, obviously doesn't fill the scratch pads criteria of being able to uh, write data. Um, also, QuitStore hasn't received any uh, recent development work, so that is uh, one in that criteria as well. Um, of the three remaining platforms, Taxonworks uh, is looking like the only platform where no criteria completely fails our fit. Um, and if you want to talk in terms of numbers, also it has the highest total overall score. Um, although it is important to note that these indicates uh, these results only indicate how well the platform fits our specific requirements for scratch pads, and doesn't say anything about the uh, wider quality or viability of these platforms in general or for other use cases. All of that said, we do have another practical consideration to think about and that is uh, money. Uh, it may be that working with Dino as a European project uh, makes funding available to us that we wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, if that's the case, we might have to consider our strategy a little bit more. Uh, for example, do we try and use Dina Collections Manager and try and fill in the missing pieces ourselves? Do we uh, continue with another platform but try to integrate with the Dina API? Uh, maybe we have some other options we can follow. Um, it's all very dependent on more investigation into uh, the funding available and kind of what options are out there. So we have some preliminary results, uh, but we also want to hear from you. So we're going to have a period of uh, consultation um, to hear about any platforms we might have missed or anything we've overlooked. And then we're hoping to settle on a, a decision by uh, October the 9th in about two weeks' time. Uh, after that, we want to move on to the next stage of the process. So that'll be start planning, design and development. And in the far future, we'll 
be migrating sites, maybe not all of them. We are considering converting some of them into static HTML where they're inactive, but of course we're not going to abandon anyone who wants to keep using the platform. Uh, that's just something to bear in mind for the future. Um, if you'd like to get in contact about anything in this presentation, you can email me at p.kittle at nhm.ac.uk or you can find out more about these results on the GitHub repository. Uh, and I'm going to take some questions now, but thank you very much for listening. Great, thank you. Of course, when I'm watching the video, I can't see the see what's been happening on the chat while I'm doing it. But <clears throat> uh, oh yes, I see there's plenty of questions here. Um, so I'll just go straight into the questions. That's okay, Paul. Um, Lauren Gardner asks, uh, "What has happened to old scratch pads? There are only two listed on the sites currently, and no facility to log in to others, including those that have been unpublished." Um, sorry, I'm not sure what that list is. Um, Lauren, perhaps you could put the link in where you're seeing that. I know I have one and one of my colleagues in the Botanic Garden has one and we're not just the only two, I'm sure. <laughs> so. um, yeah, that, I mean, there are plenty of scratch pads still in use. I think some have been archived, but those would have been at the request of the owner, I think. Um, yeah, because I think there are some, still quite some big ones in in active use. Yeah, uh, we can come back to that, Laura, if you if you put the link in there. Christian Kula, uh, coming from the CMS Drupal, have you looked at other web CMS like Typo three and WordPress? Um, no, we haven't. I think one of the opinions of the developers is that working with a CMS is um, not really optimal for, for the Scratchpad's use case just because of it's kind of how specific some of the functionality is. Um, and also we don't really want to end up in the same position down the road where we have to do a big upgrade. Um, uh, we kind of want to develop, I think, a little bit more of a sustainable platform than, than a, a, a general CSS, a CMS could um, provide for us. But then again, if um, if there are any specific options that we haven't looked at, we're, we're open, um, open to see them. I, I haven't heard of the, um, uh, fi uh, what was the platform there? Um, uh, Typo3 uh, and WordPress? Typo3, and I haven't heard of Typo3, um, so possibly worth looking into. Um, Actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea if, if someone was able to po paste a few into the uh, the links, the relevant links. Um, I'm, I know the, the big one we look after is the Alien Plants of Belgium. Uh, I know Peter will know where that is. Um, then people can go and have a look. Um, but I know the Drupal in the past, it, we kind of had to, I, I used elements of Drupal, but sometimes you had to kind of bend them a bit to make them fit. Yeah, absolutely. And also I think it's, it's, it's problems for um, new developers and people who want to run it kind of on a small scale because they have to learn the uh, the Drupal API or whatever um, CMS is chosen when in reality we might as well just create um, something using a native uh, you know, JavaScript something which which doesn't require learning a whole new um, API. So David Fishmuller says, uh, has a decision been made yet? Or if so, what's the result? I, I guess you already answered that though. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no decision's been made yet. We, we're gonna give it a couple of weeks to um, gather some feedback and, uh, and then hopefully we can settle on something and decide what direction we're going in. But yeah, part of, part of this, uh, the reason for this presentation is to um, let everyone know what our thoughts are and receive some, some feedback and ideas from other people before we, uh, make a, a solid decision. Did you already write directly to the Scratchpad owners? Um, no, this is uh, this is quite an expl uh, exploratory phase. So, um, as we've not settled on anything yet, we, uh, we we've not re really got very much to uh, report. But I mean. Uh, presumably there are some Scratchpad owners listening and we will be uh, contacting uh, anyone who's not uh, 
come to this conference um, to kind of tell them what, what, what our thoughts are now that we've released them. So James Macklin says, Dina is in full development mode and has current development activity. Okay. You put question mark. Um, I don't think he really means question mark. I think he's stating that. Uh, sure. I mean, sure. Uh, possibly I was looking uh, it, at the wrong uh, repository or something when I was doing the research for this. Um, but uh, yeah, so if, uh, if that's the case, then that's something for us to have a look at a second time, I think. So James, perhaps you can put the, the link in of where he should be looking into the, the notes that would be very useful. Uh, Kaijin Ko, perhaps you, oops, there's an anonymous buffalo blocking the word that I want to look at. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perhaps you want to try to decouple Drupal so that the content model can already support the ETL, but dot, 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 uh, ETL process. Um, yeah, I think part of the problem with that is there are a lot of custom Scratchpad modules which haven't, uh, which would need to be uh, essentially rewritten in that case. I think we do want to end up with a decoupled architecture where the, the front end is uh, is not so tied to the data storage system. But I think the work that we need to do to decouple Scratchpads as it is, is probably roughly the same as the work that we would need to do to um, migrate to a, a separate platform altogether, I think. Okay, from William, William Ulate, uh, for those tools using information from scratch pads, are you going to keep backwards compatibility to the Darwin Core archive format? Um, yeah, I think that's, that's definitely something that a lot of uh, other scratch pad uh, maintainers are, are, are gonna be interested in. So yes, I think that's, that's something that we, we want to maintain. And uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Blagoderov says, how do you expect to hear from Scratchpad maintainers if you did not even inform them? I guess you will. Yes, yeah, it, it's all part of the, the ongoing process. As I say, we've, we've not settled on anything directly. We're just kind of looking at our options at the moment and um, we, uh, we will be uh, making contact once we've got some um, kind of uh, information that, that we think they'd be interested in. Uh, Dave Martin from the Atlas of Living Australia says, hi, Paul. I know you were exploring the living atlases, but I didn't realize it was in this context. Did your mm -hmm. exploration include the Atlas of Living Australia's profiles module? Uh, it currently supports Flora of Australia, which is more scratch pad-esque. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, a lot of the, the kind of research that I did was fairly high level, so I don't think I looked specifically at the profiles module. Um, so that, again, is something to, to go back and have a look at. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't see any more coming in. There's some comments in the chat. One from Walter Adink, uh, one of the good things about Drupal is that you can actually migrate to another system, whatever new, new solution you choose. Uh, I would take into account this requirement of how easily it would be easy to migrate out of whatever you put it in now. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, that's definitely very important. Um, so I think it's probably time to move on to the next talk now. I don't see any hand 